All right, so I haven't done a React challenge video in quite a while, but I figured I'd just do one today and see the how far we can get with this challenge. The idea is like, can we just make a little React widget or component that shows some numbers and you have to type in the right four digits to have the screen kind of transition to something else. Um, so that's kind of like the problem we're trying to solve. And uh, I don't think it'd be too hard to do. I'm, I'm not gonna like spend a lot of time styling everything. I don't have too much time tonight to make this video. But I think quizzing yourself on like just this problem in general is probably good React practice. So first thing we want to try doing is just keep it simple. Can you just draw in numbers to the page zero through nine? So in our React app, um, let's just try to do the most simplest thing, which is probably make like an array of numbers. And we can just go ahead and put like hard code it from, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, okay? And we want to display those numbers to the page. So let's just go over here and I'm going to do curly brace so I can interpolate the numbers and say map. And for every number that we encounter, let's just return like a div that has that number in it, okay? So that should at least display those numbers to the page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, or all the way to zero, right? And we can zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that's like the first step. I mean, you could spend time styling it with CSS Grid or Flexbox, but I think just focusing on the actual, like, the hardest part, which is like the, the JavaScript logic part, and I think you'll be good um, if you figure that out. So the next steps is like, we want the ability to ask the user to type in four digits, and if they get the passcode correct, we're gonna go ahead and just send a message that says like success, or if they get it wrong, we will just say wrong, try again or something, really basic. So let's first of all, let's make a password. So the password, it needs to be four digits. We can just go ahead and pick any random four digits like this. And the idea is as the user clicks on new numbers, what we could do is just start building up a new array and compare the array when we get four total numbers against the password array, right? So first of all, how do we track the numbers that people are clicking? Let's convert this to a button. Because that is how, um, if you want to make accessible uh, HTML, that's how you do it. You want to be able to have a button so users can click on it. And now we have some buttons over here. Awesome. So as I click on these different buttons, we want to track what buttons they've clicked on what order. Okay. So arrays are really good for ordered um, things. Like if you need a, an ordered list, like you probably want an array, right? So anytime you have dynamic things in React going on, what you need to do is you need to store that in state. I'm gonna go ahead and say like uh, const, I'll say like sequence and set sequence. Uh, maybe that's a bad name for it. I could say like pressed numbers, set pressed numbers. I don't know, it's probably good enough right now. Let's just go ahead and say use state. This is how you can declare some state in React and I'll set that equal to an empty array. So what we wanna do is every time you click on one of these numbers, so on click, we want to like push in the number that they clicked on into this array. Okay. So when you declare a use state hook, you get access to the actual state variable and you also get a setter function. So we want to call the setter function and we're going to go ahead and just append, um, I'll say like current, and we're going to go ahead and just return uh, dot 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 current and then number, okay? In React, um, state is immutable which means that you have to kind of take the original array and just like append to it. So typically this is the approach that we do. So what is this actually complaining about? Um, this is, I'm using TypeScript, so it's complaining because I haven't typed this thing. This needs to be an array of numbers so that it doesn't get confused. TypeScript knows what we're doing. Cool. So now what we could do is as we press these different buttons, we can visualize to make sure that, hey, is this stuff working? in state. So I'm going to go ahead and move this down here and I'm going to, so I actually don't have my React DevTools in. I would probably go and just expect, inspect that in React DevTools. So what I'm actually going to do instead is I'm just going to stringify this. This is a, a nice little hacky way to do it. I'm going to stringify all the numbers that the user has pressed into the page. So now you can see there's an array of zero for some reason. I'm not even sure why that started at zero. But now as I click like one, five, seven, seven, eight, 
whatever, you can see that it's just pushing new numbers onto this array and that's good. We have a way to track what the user has clicked. And now the next part is when we get four total digits, we want to verify if the passcode they entered matches the password that is here. So what I'm actually going to do is like, I'm going to try using an effect. Some people might say that you shouldn't use an effect here and you could just do it directly here in this logic. Um, but basically I'm going to check is when the numbers changes, I'm going to go ahead and just check um, the length of it and see if it's four. I'll just say use effect. Go ahead and do this. And we will just pass in press numbers as a dependency. So basically every time you add a new number to this array, this effect is going to fire off and we can just check if press numbers out of length is equal to four. We need to verify if like we got the password correct or not. Right? So I'm going to go ahead and say, um, let's try to think of the easiest way to do this, right? How do you compare two rays to a rays? So I'm going to go ahead and just say, if, Pressed numbers dot join, and we can join them by just an empty string. That's probably fine. If so, basically, I'm taking the array. I'm just combining them all to a string, so it'd be like one, two, three, four. You know, does that make sense? If the the pressed numbers joined together is equal to the password, in this case, I could just go ahead and change this to that, something like that. That might make this a little bit easier. So if they match else if they don't match. So what do we do if if the user has typed in the correct password, we can go ahead and say like correct password. Okay? And then otherwise we'll just say console log bad password and then we probably want to like show a show an error and we probably want to reset the typed press numbers, right? So let's just go ahead and say like set press numbers is equal to empty array. So reset it back to zero, they got to try again. All right, so I'll clean this up in a little bit. It's a little bit messy, but let's just try this out. So we'll say one, three, four, four, and then notice that it resets back to empty because we did not get the right password. In fact, if I load up my console down here, you'll see that it prints out a bad password down here at the bottom, okay? Now let's do it again, but let's enter in the correct password. And what is the correct password? It's 4299. So I'll say 4299, and it says correct password. Awesome. Okay, so let's just kind of like do this to do, right? Show an error. So if they get the, pad, the bad password, let's just set an error state. How about that? And we could just say use state, this is equal to like an empty string, okay? So if the password is bad, we'll just set an error to bad password here instead of console logging it. Simple enough, right? And we are gonna go ahead and just log that out somewhere. So I'll just say like error. All right, so let's just go ahead and type in one, 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 and it prints out bad password. Awesome. Uh, four, two, nine, nine, and that says correct password. So when they click on the number for the first time after a bad password has been entered, we should probably clear out that error, right? So we're going to go ahead and try to figure out how to do that. So basically, if this was the first time this thing was fired. Like it said bad password, it re reset it back to an empty array. Um, if it's the first clicked, we should probably set this back to nothing, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and say if press numbers uh, dot length is equal to one. Actually, I'll, yeah, I'll do that. If it's the first one, I'm gonna reset the error. All right, let's try this. So I'm gonna refresh the page. I'll say one, one, two, whatever, bad password. And then I'm gonna click any of these and then that goes away. Awesome. Now, second thing we're gonna do is, let's just add another Boolean that says like, is correct. That is correct. And this is gonna be used for like showing the panel versus like not showing it. So we'll set it to false as default, but basically if you get it correct, just set this to true. And then down here, we could probably just like only show this based on if something is correct or not. So I'll say like is correct and we're going to show a div that says like success. Um, otherwise we are going to show a different div which is going to have all of this code in it. 
Okay, so I have a little ternary there. And um, technically this error should only ever display when the, the pad thing is open. So I'll, I'll move that down there. Let's try it out. Let's just type in 4299 and then there we go. We're logged in. Now there is a warning down here. Let's just go ahead and like put a key. Whenever you do a map in React, you need to put keys on your um, your elements. In this case, I mean, I'm just going to use the index of the array because we don't do any sorting on the array. We don't do anything like adding or removing from the numbers. These are always like a hard-coded list of numbers, I believe. So this should hopefully work. Okay, so let's just type in a bad password. Works fine. Click this. Success. Okay, so unless there's any edge cases I'm missing, I think this is good. Now, I think we could probably try to clean this code up a little bit. It looks a little convoluted. I don't know. I guess the only thing I would probably do is just put an else if here just to make it a little bit more clear that there's two different states. Um, this is like a magic number. So technically, like if you wanted to make this more of like a password dot length, that would probably be a little bit cleaner because now you can just add in another number here and that will automatically change the logic a little bit. Okay, now this is troublesome because like if the password is only one letter, I think like this would break. But luckily our business use case is like four four characters for a password. So I think this will work fine. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we could potentially do to clean this up a little bit. Technically resetting the password could happen every time. Like once you've typed in enough numbers into your passcode, if it's matching the password length, then just resetting it every time is probably fine as well. Um, and then also when we set it the correct, we might as well just set the errors back to an empty string just in case. You never know. So at this point, I think the logic is good. If this hopefully all makes sense to you all, um, this, sh this should work fine. Unless you guys can point out an issue. Now the second part is like styling a little bit. Now again, I said I don't want to spend too much time on the styling. But I think you could achieve a nice looking number pad using CSS grid. So I'm going to go ahead and just use just default CSS um, because why not? And I'm going to delete a lot of this stuff over here. We'll keep the button styling just because, but what we want to do is I'm going to make a, a number pad. We'll make a number pad class. Just complaining about. Do not use empty rule sets. Okay. And I'm just going to say display is grid. And I'll say grid template columns is repeat 1fr3. I think that's how you do it. I might have that back. You know, actually, I just do. Yeah, I think this is fine. I guess we'll find out when we go to it. I always forget what this the, the grid stuff is. So we're going to take that class and we're going to go ahead and just put it on this. We'll just say number pad. And that will be a div that's going to wrap all this stuff. Okay. So looks like we did not get it right. So let's go back to the CSS and we're going to swap this with three and one FR because uh, I just forgot what it was. Now this looks better. Probably we need to add some space between some of these buttons. So one thing you do is you can say gap and I could say like two rim. Okay. That looks a little okay. I mean, maybe one rim or one EM. I, I never know if it's EM or RM. Like I, one, I, I need to go back and like learn. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think the last thing is like this last column. Potentially, we need to make it centered here, so the zero is like in the center. Um, honestly, I don't remember how to do that. Grid column start. Grid column end. Yeah, I think you can do something like this. Let's just hack this together real quick. I'll say zero. And we'll just put those. And grid column start will be a one. Grid column end will be a four. Grid row start will be three and a four, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember these offsets, but basically I'm going to go ahead and just put a class here. And I'll say class name. And I'll say if number is equal to zero. Yeah, we're going to say zero. Otherwise, we'll just add no class to it. So let's see what happens if we do this. Um, so it did make it full width. That's great. I think we're just off by one. So if we go back to the row start, we should probably do a four and a five here. And that'll push it down. Um, okay. 
but then we want it to be like in the center, right? So let's just go ahead and do like a two and a three. There you have it. That's how you do it. Um, not the most intuitive in my opinion, but it, it works. So that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and you learned something about um, building like a passcode that you see like on an iPhone or any type of phone lock screen. Uh, obviously, this is a simplified approach, but it's a good practice problem. So if you enjoyed watching this, give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe, press the bell icon. And like always, I got a Discord channel. You're welcome to join if you want to find a place to ask some questions to other developers or just send me a message. I'm there as well. Other than that, have a good day. Hope this helped. Happy coding.